Taiyan, China, host to the 2008 UCI BMX World Championships. This is a first for cycling as the UCI holds its inaugural World Championships in Asia. Riders from around the globe have descended on Taiyan, one of China's biggest cities for a weekend of thrilling races and high drama. World titles will be settled here, and this being the Olympic year, it also serves as a crucial qualifier for the 2008 Beijing Games. The 2008 BMX World Championships had everything you'd expect from a sport about to make its Olympic debut. Drama, heartache, controversy, and glory. In a few weeks' time, BMX will be center stage to the world when it appears as an Olympic sport in Beijing. Fans have already had a taste of what's on offer when the world's elite riders took part in an Olympic test event in Beijing last year. Donnie Robinson of the USA came out as winner. If there's one word on everyone's lips here at the Worlds, then it's the Olympics. In terms of their Olympic qualification dreams, this event is absolutely crucial to almost every rider here. My main goal for the season is like to qualify for Olympics. The Olympic Games is it's the pinnacle of sport. It's the biggest event in my whole career. Just to say you're an Olympian is something that not many people get the opportunity to do. It's a childhood dream. I've always dreamed to be going to the Olympics. Making the Olympic team was definitely, definitely a dream come true. I guess it's probably something really big. It's hard to think of anything better than, than being part of the USA Olympic team. The Olympics for me is the biggest event in the world. Defending world champion Kyle Bennett has already claimed his Olympic place. So is the pressure off? I can always take one race at a time, man, and uh, I feel pretty good. Only 32 male and 16 women riders will get a place at the Olympics. UCI head honcho Johan Lindstrom explains how. This event is obviously very important because this is the final uh, qualification event for the Olympic Games. For those countries that doesn't qualify through the ranking, they will qualify right here on this track for the Olympic Games. And, uh, I'm telling you, it's going to be some, uh, some amazing racing. Smaller BMX nations like the United Kingdom and Switzerland can stake an Olympic claim at this World Championships. The best six nations who haven't already qualified for the Olympics can do so here at the Worlds, but only if they progress far enough through. Here's how the men's nations ranking stand coming into the World Championships. You can see the top five nations get three spots each for the Olympics. That's good news for the likes of the USA, Australia, and the Netherlands. Latvia and Colombia also seem fairly sure of three places, but that could all change depending on what happens here in Taiyan. Chasing them hard are France and Argentina. They're among the next group who have two Olympic places, but could do better with good results here at the Worlds. It's all set to be an emotional roller coaster. For the women, this is how the top eight nations look. Those leading four are currently looking at two places each at the Olympics, while the others have one place. Bear in mind that, again, all this can change depending on what happens here at the Worlds. What this doesn't show is that three more nations will also get an Olympic spot if they do well enough here. That's what current world champ Shanae's Reed is looking for. Chasing these coveted team spots are the riders themselves. This event's not just the World Championships for me, it's the Olympic qualification race as well. With uh, the Olympics coming around, it's uh, a race that obviously selectors are going to be looking at and just seeing how you cope with the pressures of other countries and this sort of event. With Australia, we're on the button as far as getting two girls into the game. And I think we've got two out with injuries now, <laughs> Melissa and Nicole, so it's up to me to get the points. So a bit of pressure this weekend, but I'm up for it. Theoretically, it's possible to get the spot by doing a quarter final or even an eighth final last year would have been good enough. So but I'm going for the semi-final and I'm sure and ready to go. There's not much pressure on this race to kind of uh, be worried about. I just want to go out and see what things I need to work on um, for the Olympics and see what I need to improve on. I will probably will be the one who is going for the Olympics. So I don't have to beat for me. 
but uh, race for my colleagues. For me, it's just about qualifying for the Olympics. And then once I've done that, then of course I want to retain my title and become world champion. Actually, it doesn't really even matter how I do it this race. I've already qualified, so that, that kind of takes a little pressure off, but definitely willing to help out the USA team so we can definitely take three guys. I'd like to be in there, but I know it's going to be a really outside shot, so more of a 2012 prospect, so just get ready for that. It's the last event before Olympics, so we want to show we are here, and uh, hopefully it will be a good race for Frenchies. Jared and I have got a, a fair few points for the country, and then Kamikaze's come good in the last few races, so it's kind of looking like us three guys should uh, should get there, and uh, but we'll see what happens. Czech Republic got one spot, and uh, it's 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 me, so I'm I'm pretty safe for now. Practice got going in fairly blustery conditions with riders looking to dial in the track secrets. It's a good track, I like it, it's nice wide and open which suits my style, a bit technical so yeah I really like it. Track is fluid and all that so I really like it, it's going to be a fast one. The track out there suits me down to a T, it's long, long first straight, te technical in areas which you know I've just got to be switched on for that but I feel really confident coming into the race. It's fairly basic, but at the same time, there's uh, some pretty difficult parts out there. I think the first jump's going to sort a lot of the racing out, and especially that third straight. Track's good, track's fun, it flows. So, looking forward to riding it, having fun, and hopefully the wind stays down a bit. It's kind of difficult with the wind, always blowing in a different way. I think like the, the wind's going to be, you know, the, the biggest opponent. The track can be pretty tricky, especially in a full lap. That third straight's catching some people off guard, so uh, it'll be interesting to see what happens through the day, but I'm feeling pretty good. The track's a little bit technical, but it, it's reasonably simple, but it's got technical places. Some of the jumps are really tiny, and you have to get like a good backside to transfer through to the rest of the straight. I'm feeling strong out of the gate, and the second straight's a lot of fun. Um, third straight's going to be the decider, though. You can take the third straight at two different speeds. The first half is like medium pace and the second half is, is definitely flat out. I just need to make up my mind before I go in what I'm going to do because there's two ways you can go through it. As far as the track goes, I really like it. I think the wind's going to be a bit of an issue this afternoon. Hopefully it's going the right way for me. I think the only thing we're battling with is the wind right now, but other than that, the track's phenomenal. A lot of titles are contested at the BMX Worlds. The most prestigious are the four top categories. There's junior men and junior women. These are for the younger and upcoming hot new talent with guys like Sam Willoughby and Vincent Pelward looking to claim the junior men's title. Then there's the elite men and elite women. This is the very top level of the sport. Some of these guys and gals are Olympic bound in less than two months. Expect fast and furious racing as the world's best do battle round this specially designed track. The USA's Ariel Martin placed sixth at last year's World Champs. With a recent second place at the BMX Supercross World Cup in Adelaide, this elite woman rider has victory in her sights. My name is Ariel Martin. I am 22 years old and I'm from the USA. My dad raced in, uh, in the late 80s. Um, I remember just wanting to ride from, from the time I was just a little girl. I was off training wheels at two and a half and just wanted to race, wanted to race. And uh, for my fifth birthday, my parents got me a race bike and uh, never really looked back. That was 1990, so going on 18 years. But uh, I really just focused on that, crazy to say, you know. I did four cross uh, in 2006, 2005, dabbled in it some and had a great time, you know, and, and I, I definitely think I'm gonna get back into it. Once it's over, uh, 
you know, but I've been really focused on, on BMX. It's, you know, I didn't really do other sports in high school. You know, I turned, once I turned 15, I turned pro in the American circuit and uh, started training full time for that. So. I'm a cyclist at heart. I'd love to dabble in velodrome and track and uh, do a little bit more four cross and maybe come back 2012 and, and give it a second go for BMX. Um, I probably think the best uh, international finish would, would definitely be my second in Adelaide at the Supercross just a few months ago. So, um, you know, it's exciting being able to travel internationally and race internationally more often than once a year. So uh, that's, that's probably my highlight. That, that race was, you know, that race was, it was, uh, it was sweet and salty at the same time, you know. I felt really great all day. You know, I'd won my qualifiers and, and uh, got into the final and, um, was winning the entire race until the third straight, and I had a problem with a particular section of the track. Had a problem with it all weekend, you know, I just, it wasn't linking up for me, and uh, Sarah, Sarah definitely had the last two straightaways dialed, and she came for me, and we battled down the last straight, and I made another mistake, and, uh, you know, she took the win, but definitely, you know, feel like my, my training and my coaching uh, from PH has, you know, put me to the point now where I'm right up where I'd like to be. I think the mental, mental preparation is something that's overlooked a lot in the sport and it's something that I've worked on really hard the last few months and I think it's paid off. I'm much more relaxed in the gate than I was. I'm not quite as tense or fired up, you know. I've learned to control, control my breathing, control what's going on in my head and really just keep my mind clear and let my body take care of what it's been trained to do. You know, you don't want that mind to interfere with it. I'd have to say, you know, Mikey Day is a, he's a, I'm a big fan of his, I guess you could say. You know, we've grown up together, we've known each other for a really long time. His style, I think, is uh, is something to to really to really try to even dream of. You know, um, as a rider, we live we live in an apartment next to each other. Um, you know, so Kyle and Kyle Bennett's uh, definitely you know someone I've always looked up to too. So those guys are those guys are definitely taking care of business. You know, skills has, has been my advantage since I was young. You know, yeah, I like to play around with the bike a little bit, throw it around when I'm at home, just make sure I'm loose and and not too stiff out there. I try to stay smooth, I try to stay powerful, but most important, just try to have fun on the bike. You know, I try not to be too stiff. You know, I'd like to think I've got some style for a girl. <laughs> try to ride like Mike, I don't know if that's attainable though. The elite women started their quarterfinals with the win still a bit blustery, but this would prove to be no worry for Shanae's Reed of the UK, who opened up a few bike lengths by the bottom of the start hill alone. Reed hasn't been at too many elite international races of late, but she's lost none of her edge. She powered through the track ahead of New Zealand's Sarah Walker, herself no shirker, and easily took the win. Second was Sarah Walker, and qualifying behind her were Romana Labakanova and Cyrielle Convert. These rounds step on a little bit more, a little bit more. Still so much more to come. In the semi, you know, wind up a bit more. In the main, it's just everything. Reed's arch rival, Anne Caroline Chasson, was in the second heat. The French woman is a master of mountain bike as well as BMX, and her track skills were in abundance through this quarterfinal. She got a better gait than U.S. rider Ariel Martin, and the race was all but over by the first straight. Chasson was in second at the Worlds last year. She'll be looking to challenge Reed for the top spot. Other qualifiers from the quarterfinal were Amelie Despo, Magali Poitier, and Jenny Fendrich. In 2007, Leticia Lee Corgill was the overall Elite Women's Supercross Series winner. She has got a ton of talent, and it was on display in Heat 3 of the women's quarterfinals. The race was hers for the taking after an explosive gate start for Lee Corgill. There was a tight race behind her, but she never lost the plot and took the win comfortably. The others really battled for third and fourth qualifying spots, and in the end it was Kim Hayashi lost out to Joanne Gove by just less than one-tenth of a second. Heat number four of the women's quarters proved to be quite a battle. Maria Gabrielle Diaz got the better start, but Yana Harakova chased her all the way. 
Also in the mix were Samantha Cools and Tanya Bailey. Dia stayed composed, showing why she's made the podium so many times, while the other three were content to qualify as well. There was disappointment of Dutch Olympic hopeful Leaky Klaus, who didn't make the cut. I had really good gait, so I was second from the gate and finished it second, so I'm very satisfied. In the junior men quarterfinals, it was a story of, well, how near these younger guys are getting to the elite men. Their quarterfinals got going with Australian Sam Willoughby showing exactly why he's getting close to a main event in elite. He set off down the first straight neck and neck with Jelian Van Gorken of the Netherlands. But Van Gorken mistimed the first turn and almost lost it off the lip of the berm. That opened up the door for Willoughby, who went on to qualify for the semis in first place. In the next junior men's quarterfinal, the reigning junior world champ lined up in gate three. Vincent Pelward of France was here to add another title to his growing chest of silverware. But it was his fellow countryman, Joris Drede, that got the better start. He held off the challenge of Pelward and the rest to take the win. Also qualifying were Richards, Veed, and Joshua Callan. Latvia have a ton of talent and that goes through to their junior team as well. In heat number three of the junior men's quarters, Tom Skukins proved this point in a very tight and frenetic race. He battled all the way round with Aussie Michael Chastanov and American Logan Collins. This was a super fast race. Chastanov recorded a time of 37.98 seconds. The last of the junior men's quarterfinals proved a tough one for South African Gavin Lube as he went down on that tight turn number one. That left the door open for Jan Vub, Yasaku, Koshi, and Florian Duhamel. Those were the guys making the top three spots. The last qualification spot in the quarterfinal went to another Japanese rider, Yujira Takayama. The elite men quarters were going to be an intense affair. So much at stake with these Olympic qualification points up for grabs. There would be heartache and glory in this round. It started sensationally enough when the reigning world champ, Kyle Bennett, got a terrible start and battled to make it back into the running. He couldn't. Up ahead, Jonathan Suarez was in total control. He went on to take the win. Joining him in the semis would be Manuel De Vicky, Steven Cesar, and Ivo Lecoux. Here's what Bennett had to say on his exit from the event. Uh, it's, uh, come up a little short this year, but it's the World Championships. Everybody here is going fast. It happens. Um, just uh, look forward to uh, now trying to get ready for the Olympics. But I mean, hats off to all these guys. Everybody's killing it right now. It's got a bad start. <laughs> The next quarterfinal was what BMX racing at its best is all about. Fast, elbow-to-elbow, -elbow, thrilling stuff. There was little to split the pack going round turn one. But down the pro straight, it was the Latvian Strombergs who edged out in front. He kept it together under pressure from Thomas Hamon and Raymond van der Biesen. Look out for those Latvians at the Olympics. They are getting stronger as each race comes and goes. Two of Australia's medal prospects were in the third quarter final. Jared Graves and Luke Medill raced down that start hill shoulder to shoulder, and they were both out in front down the straight. It was Graves who made it to the front as the rest followed right behind. A real masterclass in close-fought racing. 
Graves went on to win it, and the other semifinalists would be Luke Medill, Gamian Godot, and Sergio Salazar Lopez. The last quarterfinal would prove to be an emotive one. Thomas Erlier appearing in his last World Champs. Could he make it through? And Martin Sherpin needing to get to the semis to seal his Olympic berth in the Dutch team. The utter cruelty of the sport showed its face when Sherpin, after racing so very well in almost all the Supercross races over the last year, was pipped to the post by Michael Prokop. This shattered his Olympic dream, and it was all too evident in the aftermath of the race. 16-year-old Aussie rider Sam Willoughby is starting to make some waves on the BMX circuit. He's currently ranked 15th in the world and has got his sights set on the junior world title. I started BMX when I was six and basically just got a letter in the school bulletin saying to come and try at my local track, Happy Valley, and just went from there. I loved it, always liked riding my bike. And I've always played football, Australian rules football. Like my mum's always sort of told me you have to do a team sport because you need to learn how to interact with other people sort of thing. And I think my football has definitely helped me there because I come into this team environment and I get along with everyone. I know how to handle different people's personality and Obviously I love winning and I like it because it's an individual sport and it's up to me to do what I want to do with it and it's up to me to train and it's up to me to go out there and win the race. It's not up to the other 20 players on my team. To I've sort of got to rely on myself to do it. I don't have to worry about them. Pretty much we do the normal stuff, you know, your sprints in your gym and we ride the track and a lot of mental stuff I focus on anyway because I believe that's a big part of it. One thing I've tried to sort of focus on this year is more just focusing on what I've got to do at the exact time and like sort of focusing on the now more than the end result. So basically when I'm on the gate I'm focusing on getting the gate and then I'm focusing on getting the first jump and then the second jump. So sort of taking it, I don't know, 10 metres at a time almost, not 400 metres at a time. My style of riding is sort of, I'm definitely aggressive if I'm behind but if I'm in front I'm more just trying to flow through the track and get through it as fast as I can. I like to control the race and be out front and be able to do my thing and make them have to get around me. I guess I realised um, I could go somewhere in this sport when I made a double A final in um, Australia in January, start of 2007. It's sort of only been the last couple of years where I've really picked up some sponsors and really sort of got the ball rolling, I guess, towards where I want to go. It means so much for me to be at the World Championships this year. Like I remember going to watch watch the Melbourne World Championships in 1998 and just always wanting to be at, at a World Championship. I remember putting an ice cream lid on my number on my bike in the backyard that had a W1 on it. At the moment, I want to win Junior Elite Worlds this year, but I'm sort of looking a bit ahead of that, and I want to go to the 2012 Olympics and hopefully get a medal. The junior men got ready at the start hill for the semi-finals. You're looking at the start list for the junior men semi-finals heat number one. Sam Willoughby has been making a name for himself in the supercross races with the elite men. He's back down in junior men for the world championship, looking for a title here. And he is definitely the one to watch. The snap has happened and they are gone down that first straight. And as expected, it's Willoughby out there in the lead. Look at how far he is pulling ahead as he makes it into that first berm. He is just trucking through that rhythm section. He's got to stay smooth. It's all his. He's just got to keep his cool and get through these rhythm sections. Behind him, the French rider, Poad. Oh, there's some drama in the turn. French rider goes down, takes out the Swiss rider. Oh my, look at this. It looks like it's, yes, it's French rider Dende, Dendo, excuse me, and the Swiss rider Renaud Blanc. But meanwhile, up in front is Sam Willoughby taking things home, followed by Poad. But keep your eye on the French rider. He slides out and that's not all. Takes out Swiss rider Renaud Blanc. Oh, painful. Bit of a late gate, but uh, got the first one good and pulled away from there and on to the next one now. So Willoughby and Pawad will be making it into that final. I'm going to put all my money on Willoughby. The guy has been strong. Here's the second semi-final for the junior men. We've got some Americans in there, Logan Collins and Denzel Stain, as well as Skookins. Now Skookins, Tom Skookins from Latvia, comes from a long line of talented riders from that very small country. And they are about to get the snap. And they are off, coming down that starting hill and through that first straight. 
keeping the bike on the ground. That's what you want to do. It's very important. And it looks like it's going to be Skookins and the USA rider Stains, followed by Japanese rider Yusaka Koshu. And look at these two riders going through this big rhythm section. Got to keep it smooth to get in there. And they are in the second berm. Things are spreading out here. Looks like it's going to be Skookins. And then it's going to be Stain, followed by... The Japanese rider. Look, it's almost like there is actually two races going on. You got the top three and the rest of the pack. So it looks like it's going to be Skookins, Stain, and then Koshu. And back to the beginning of this race, you can see the riders, Stain and Skookins, keeping the bikes low, keeping in control. And then finally, Japanese rider making a move. Really nervous, but pull together. Watch all the elites, how they ride. Use some of their lines. My teammate Bubba Harris knows how to tank turns really good. So I just used this technique and swung down low. And I just managed to pull up on side of him. So it worked out really well. So now I got to try to win this for not only me, but for the USA. So meeting the others in the finals will be Tom Skookins, Denzel Stain, Yusaka Koshi, and Florian Duvmal. It takes a lot more than pure luck to win a world title, but even so, some riders have got some weird superstitions. I don't want to give away any secrets. My only superstition is not to have superstitions, really. Oh yeah, I got a lot of superstitions. I've been wearing the same socks all week, from stuff I do flying on the plane coming here. I have lucky knickers. I have my uh, two pairs of uh, underwear I wear which wrist I put the wristband on. Everything that I do, I start with my right side first. Never never start with the left side, never. Uh, there are a few things I do. I always seem to put my, uh, my left shin pad on first before my right. And then I have to put my race kit on three times. I'm fastening my shoes three times, so I guess that's a little strange, but I've always done that and I just continue to do it. How I wake up in the morning or what I eat. Sometimes if I go to a two-day race and I won't shower for the two days, set of socks. Before I get up there for each race, I just kind of kiss my ring. My mom gave me a, a lucky charm before I came away, which is in my shoe. Have a little key ring that I happened to find in Vegas in the uh, middle of last year. I just had triple seven winner on it. No, there's nothing really superstitious or lucky that I do, you know, I just try to come and have fun and do my thing, you know? No, no, really. Uh, I just got good, good dinner and uh, good sleep and that's it. You know, I have, I have a little girl, so I'm always thinking about my little girl and uh, try to be good and uh, that's it. No, nothing superstitious. Look at my number, number 13, that says it all. Try to get rid of that years ago so there's nothing playing on my mind. Just always uh, thank God before I get on the gate, man, and watch after me. And for the most part, just trying to have fun. Oh, if it works, it works. And my, the mind is a strong tool. The junior women took center stage for the main event, the final. All right, this is it, the finals for the junior women. This is the start list. Eva Loud, Manon Valentino, Mariana Payon, just to name a few. And look at the deep stack of French talent. There are four French riders in here, so they have got a good chance. And this is it. The final for the junior women. These are the pros of tomorrow. <laughs> Waiting for that starter. And they're off. Screaming down that chair. Looks like the Colombian rider's gonna get that whole shot. She is working hard, getting smooth. Oh, she goes down, takes a French rider with her. Pajon goes down, and it looks now like it's number 148. Yeah, next, excuse me, it's Manon Valentino. She's in the lead right now, but she's got some serious challenge coming on from that Australian rider. The Lauren Reynolds taking it, and now Valentino taking it back. This is an incredible race. These ladies are chopping things up, going through the rim section. Valentino's in trouble. If she doesn't watch out, Reynolds is going to come back and get her again. 
And right here, this is where your legs are burning on this track. It is a long one, longer than we've seen so far, and it's gonna be Valentino, then Reynolds, and then Brackens. What happened at the beginning of that race? You can see the Colombian rider Pagnon loops out and takes out Aliad from France. Uh, uh, fabulous. Uh, uh, a bit of tangle up in the first straight, but I dodged that and uh, got all right second straight. Although she was a little bit too quick and come round me. It's absolutely amazing. I won first year junior lead, so it's come this far. It's, it's incredible. Congratulations to the three women, Manon Valentino, Lauren Reynolds, and Rachel Bracken. This is what the junior men have been waiting for, their world championship final. This is the junior men's final. This is it. You got Sam Willoughby has been strong all day long. Vincent Pelwad and Denzel Stain also making a name for himself here in Taiyan, China. These are the world championships. The title is at stake. This is an important race for all these riders. And the gate has dropped. And as expected, Willoughby is getting that whole shot. But Stain is right next to him. They are keeping the bikes on the ground. A little bit of air is not a problem. But they want to keep the traction going. And Willoughby coming into the rhythm section. He's in the lead for now. But Stain is right behind him doing a great job of negotiating this rhythm section into turn number two. Willoughby in the lead coming through now. You can see the rhythm section. Very technical aspect. Willoughby has got it dialed. Oh, Stain makes a little bit of a mistake. That could cost him dearly. And it does. Second place is no longer his. It's Pelward making his way into second place. It's going to be Willoughby, Pelward, and Stain. And you can see just that little bobble was all it took to take him out of that second place spot. Watch the left hand side of your screen. Pelward gets the swoop. Ready, you the best. <laughs> just got a good start and just held on from there. Oh, this is a big goal for me this year, and that just feels awesome. Nothing beats that. Last year, I was first and final in the same category, and this year I wanted to win. Uh, so on, it's, it's nice, but I wanted I wanted to win. Congratulations to Sam Willoughby, the world champion for the finals and the junior men here in 2008. The World Championships continued with the elite women getting ready in the start gate for the semifinals. Here we are for the first of the semifinals. You have Shanae's Reed and Caroline Chasson, Sarah Walker, some very strong competitors, all of them capable of winning this race. And they're waiting for that snap. And the semifinals underway. They're coming down the starting hill, and Shanae's Reed's already made her way into the whole shot position. This woman has got some very strong legs into the first turn. Following her is going to be Anne Caroline Chasson from France. Sarah Walker in third. Incredible riding right now. Shanae's Reed is pulling away from everybody. Afterburners are on. Second berm. Nice big sweeper as they make their way through that turn into this very technical, smaller rhythm section, but not at all smaller in difficulty. These girls are just incredible. Shanae's Reed's holding it together. She is looking for a spot in that final. She's looking for a world championship title, and she looks to be well on her way. And Caroline in second place. And in third is going to be Sarah Walker, and Dispo will get that transfer spot. I'm in final. I have good feeling. Everything is possible now, so let's, let's go. Let's go riding. So it's going to be Reed, Chasson, Walker, and Despo moving into the finals. 
So looking to battle Shanae's Reed and Anne Caroline Chasson in that final. You've got in this semifinal Leticia Lee Corgill, Yana Harakova. You also have Samantha Cools, Jill Kentner from America, and you're looking at Tanya Bailey as the women are getting ready to set up. Got to sit back down here, not quite ready to go, and you don't want those nerves to affect you too early. It looks like Tanya's a little bit shaken there. All these women's nerves are on edge. This is do or die for them. They've got to make it into the final. Only four will advance. And the gate is dropped. The women are barreling down that starting hill. Looks to be, and it's going to be, yes, Leticia Lee Corgill gets the lead. She's got the whole shot, jumping that entire set of doubles there into that first berm, into the second straight, the rhythm section. Good job. Yana Harkova in the back there, followed by Samantha Cools making oh, it. Samantha. Yeah, Samantha Cools getting a swoop. She's now in third place. And Jill Kinder getting a swoop there. You can see her now in fourth. She's looking for that transfer spot. Good job for Kinder from the USA. And it's going to be in the number one spot, Corgiel, as she comes around that final berm into the final straight. Got to hold it together. It looks like it's going to be Corgiel, Horikova, Cools, and Kintner making a transfer. It's good. Right now, we have been through a lot. I'm psyched. All right, so Leticia Lee Corgiel, Yana Horikova, Samantha Cools, and Jill Kintner moving on to the finals. With a Supercross title win in France and a second place in Madrid, recently under his belt, New Zealander Mark Willers is one to watch here at the Worlds. I'm Mark Willers, I'm 22 and from New Zealand. I've been riding for 18 years. My parents took me to the track when I was four. Every week of my life since I've been riding. I did my first national champs back home when I was six years old and got sixth at that. And I've never finished anything worse than eighth and that was with a broken arm. Ever since I was 10 years old I've only lost two titles. It's my life. I don't know anything else. I plan to be riding my bike to the ground. I admire everybody. Um, they're all competitors and they're all nice guys. I mean, from coming back home in New Zealand, you think you're a little outcast, but when you get in the mix of everything, it seems that every BMXer all around the world, they're all exactly the same. Style, I wouldn't say I have too much of. Uh, I prefer myself more of a horsepower kind of guy. I just try to get in front by the first corner and hang on from there on out. Since the day that they announced BMX was in the Olympics, I've just assumed I was going. Yeah, I just can't wait to get on that gate. As soon as that red light goes, just snap and stomp. That's what I use, so just snap, stomp and cut someone off. To a lot of New Zealanders, you know, sport is between New Zealand and Australia. I guarantee come games time that whether there's Latvia, America, Europe, whoever on the gate, it's every New Zealand is going to be looking at the Australian and you've got to beat the Australian. I want to race, I've spent a lot of time in uh, Sierra Walker's shadow, so I'd love to be able to step out in front of it and join, join her up in the light. Yeah, up until the Frey Juice race, I'd never had good starts, let alone random starts, just hitting practice and I was just hooking up like never before and I was just I was just feeling it and then every race I was just getting better and better and then somehow in the final I just got it all wrong but luckily didn't get squeezed out and then pulled back up to third and everything just fell out of my way. I felt like I felt like it was a bit of a given but uh, I'll still take it for sure. Just being able to cross the line in front of them all was crazy. I loved it. Definitely a lot of guys out there with a lot more skill than me and I'll give it to them. I, you know, I, I do my part and try to watch them, see how they're doing things and just hopefully it'll rub off for good one day. The one on my back is just uh, sort of a life promise. The promise to myself to always try to be number one, whether I am or not. That's just, I'm always going for gold. I just keep doing it and it's fun. There's no other way to describe it. The championship progressed with the elite men rolling into the gate for the semifinals. 
Here it is, semifinal number one for the elite men. Four riders will transfer to that final. You have Mar Strombergs, Ramon van der Biesen, Thomas Hamon, some very talented riders, as well as Jonathan Suarez, all looking for a spot into that final. Riders are up on the start. This is the moment where they're just completely focused. Their nerves are there. Their muscles are ready to explode out of this gate. Semi-final number one underway. The riders are trucking down that first straight. And it looks like it's going to be Maris Strombergs getting the lead into that first berm, followed by Hamon and Suarez from Venezuela going through the rhythm section. Look at the control. These riders are incredible. Where is Steven Cesar? He's back there somewhere. Not a place he wants to be, and he is now in fourth place, though. That will be good. And you see the riders making through that technical rhythm section. What is going on? Look at this. It's, oh, man, two places. Steven Cesar makes up going from fourth to second place. He is a tactician. Incredible. Incredible. Yeah, it was hard. So hot. I'm really tired. Yeah. Tried to do my best. So moving on, it'll be Stromberg, Cesar, Suarez, and Hamon. Semi-final number two. This is the elite men. This is their last chance. Only the top four will make it into the final. You got Jared Graves and Luke Medill. You got Damien Godot, Thomas Allier, a very stacked heat. Also, Safiso Nlapo from South Africa have been training very hard in the last few weeks. And there is the snap. The racers are off. Down that first straight, staying very low over that first jump. Lots of control. Who's it going to be into the first berm? Jared Graves. It's going to be Jared Graves. Safiso on the level. Some drama. Luke Medill goes down hard. Jared Graves getting a little style in that rhythm section. Stay in control. Safiso Nalapo in second place. Followed by Donnie Robinson from the USA getting through this technical third straightaway. And in fourth, it's going to be Thomas Amon. They got to keep it together. What happened, though, in that first berm? Wow, incredible racing. Jared Graves makes it, but man, things went horribly wrong out there for his countryman, Luke Medill. Going into that first berm, you can see there up the top of your screen, up, getting sketchy. Luke Medill goes down hard, but so did Thomas Allier. So here's who's going to the finals. Jared Graves, Safiso Nalapo, Donnie Robinson, Damien Godot. But what happened to Thomas? Honestly, just on the second, uh, second jump, and I couldn't put my, my foot uh, clipped in again before, the, before the, uh, the last jump on the first straight. And uh, I jumped a bit squarely, and I, I was trying to put my feet, my, my clips on, my clips on, and on the, on the corner, my, my pedal just touched the ground and flip over. Yeah. <laughs> All right, for, that was my last world. That was, that was my last uh, world championship. This is it. This is the elite women's finals. Shanae's Reed right there. Next to her, Leticia Lee Corgill. They like these lanes. They've been doing very well in them. And Caroline Chasson. And next to her is Sarah Walker, winner from our Australia Supercross. Very, four very strong women. Looking at Jana Harkova from the Czech Republic. Amelie Despo from France. Samantha Cools making Canada proud here, representing. And representing the United States, Jill Kintner. And that's going to be it. This is your final race. This is for the world championship title. Riders ready. Watch the game. 
They are loaded and they have snapped. The ladies are off. This is it. 2008 World Championships are underway. And look at Shanae's Reed. She's got the early lead as expected. Can one woman be that much more talented than the rest of the pack? Look at how she has just exploded. She really wants this win and she's going to get it if she just holds on. She's got to keep her rhythm through this very technical course. Oh, there's some movement there. Who was it that got the swoop? It looks like Anne Caroline made the swoop. Oh, there's some drama through the rhythm. Riders down everywhere. This is incredible. It's going to be Sinead Reed and Anne Caroline Chasson. No way. Sarah Walker's in the third spot, followed by Yana Harakova. What happened there? Sinead Reed, incredible riding. That's the way to be. Get out away from the drama. So looking back at a spectacular ride for Sinead Reed. Just incredible from start to finish. That's the way you do it. How many bike lengths is she in the lead from? It's just tremendous. And then she held it together on the rhythm section. Congratulations to the world champion. There's a number one on that plate for a reason, Shanae's Reed. Unbelievable. I had the worst lap of the day. I'm still, still in the world, I can't believe it. A really good start, so. But I was riding, riding really well after that. So I go back to the second place. I think I can, I can, I can still do better. Two is good, but one's better. So, so congratulations to Sinead Reed, your 2008 UCI BMX World Champion. This is it, the final for the elite men. You're looking at Maris Strongbergs. You might as well call him Maris Strongbergs. This guy is incredible. Next to him, Steven Cesar, always a chance for him to pass in the late, late aspect of this race. Jared Graves from Australia. Next to him, Jonathan Suarez. He's been doing very well, very consistent rider. Francis Thomas Hamon. Safiso Nalapo from South Africa. Donnie Robinson has a real chance at taking away the crown here today. And Damien Goudet from France, another very fast rider. You're looking at the eight best in the world here. They've battled all day long to get into this position. This is now do or die for them. This is for the world championship title. And these guys are focused. You notice that Donnie gets up at the last second there. Very zen-like. And there's the snap. The riders are off and watch. Wow, look at Safiso. He's making a move. Who's going to get it into that first berm? It's going to be Strombergs, but there's Cesar getting a little contact. Hey, man, Robin's racing. I like Days of Thunder. Take a look at this. Incredible Strombergs followed by Safiso Nalapo. Where is Cesar? Cesar is in third place. Incredible riding from from Nalapo, incredible. Where's Cesar? He's making his move. This is where he always gets it. And he does. He gets second place. It's going to be Strombergs, Cesar, and then Safisa Nalapo getting a third spot. Incredible riding by these riders. And you can see the two, Safisa Nalapo and Maris Strombergs, but it's going to be Maris. And there's some contact. Hello. Oh, my name's Steven Cesar. I want to be here. But it is going to be Strombergs walking away with that world title. This year, I start to believe myself that I can do it. I can be, be as good as all other guys. And it really works. Feeling amazing. I put together a good lap, put some good passes together, and second in the world. Been asked for much more. Oh, I feel pretty good. I've put a lot of hard work in over the past couple of months. So. I just wanted to race and get it over with, but happy to be here. The track's really good. Everyone's awesome, and yeah, what more can I say? Happy to be in one piece. So congratulations to Maris Strombergs from Latvia, bringing it home for country and himself, the 2008 world champion. The final results of the 2008 World Championships has a massive impact on the Olympic qualification. On the men's side, this is how it shapes up for the qualifying places for each nation. Here's the leading nations. There's the USA on top. They'll get three spots as well the next four nations. There'll be a total of 32 riders competing in Beijing. 
and there you'll see the benefit of doing well at the World Championships themselves. These are the nations that get to send one rider each to the Olympics. All six of these countries get their spot from how well they did at this championships alone. In the women's, the big story is that the USA, after showing so much form, eventually lost out on two spots. They'll just be sending one woman to the games, and it's likely to be Jill Kintner. France are the number one UCI-ranked women's team. They can send two athletes, as can New Zealand, Australia, and Argentina. Well, that's it from the 2008 UCI BMX World Championships. The sport is heading for the Olympics very soon. And if one thing's for sure, there's going to be some sensational racing in Beijing. See you there.